Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Jeffy Hard here. And I'm super excited because this is the dopest rack that I've seen, heard, felt, touched in a long time. And uh, I got it for you. And it's pretty sweet. So uh, yeah, let's let's take a look at the step sequencer. Uh, this was built by a genius, the man, the myth, the legend. Where's he at? This guy, Anthony Arroyo. dot com. dot com, the Ableton Cookbook. All right, you should check this guy out. He's got a post where uh, make an Ableton step sequencer without Max for Live. And I saw that, and, you know, all the step sequencers I've ever seen are, um, they're all about clip modulation, so you have to draw in all the steps in your clip, and uh, it works, but it just sucks. You know, you know, I'm not in the workflow of keeping track of my clips the same way that I am keeping track of my devices. And so this is a device that you can just drag onto any MIDI rack, and it's going to work. Nice. Also, you should follow this guy on Twitter. He's got tips every day. He's a genius, and he was going to go out with me for a beer. But he never got back to my email. So, uh, you know, it's cool. I'm not, I'm not hurt or anything. I'll just get over it. So let's take a look at the pitch sequencer that uh, he makes in the video. And it's an arpeggiator working with a random device. And so this creates our notes, and this changes the notes. That's where the genius lies. Then each one of these chains here goes on a, um, well, that was dumb, a different key. And so as you play, you can see that each one of those is being fired on a different chain. And if you see, if you hit auto and play it, then, uh, you know, it's going to follow all those chains. And so you can see each one of these has a different thing mapped to this macro here, so we can change it. Let's go higher because you probably don't have anything plugged in. Cool. So just by, you know, moving those around, you can create little patterns and stuff like that. So that's the basic idea. And so I just took that and, you know, cleaned it up. Took it to the next level because I love that idea. And I've already been making tracks using it. And so this is the rack that I came up with. Um, the main thing is that... There's a scale at the end, which he had suggested in the video, and, and we can have it either a major or minor. And then there's a global transpose. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll just take you through the functions here. Let's do, let's get this guy out of here and this guy in. All right, so we can change the rate. We can shift the pattern up and down, which is kind of like a cool arpeggiator type thing. Because then we can, like, so let's say that's the one chord, and then we can go up a fifth, and then back down a one. And you're playing that riff up and down the, uh, the different key. Um, I'm a big fan of that idea. And it always stays in the key because of the scale plug we have at the end. Okay, let's make this minor. Oh! And every, all this stuff works. So... Cool. And then you can put it in different keys. Great. Uh, now this is kind of an experimental thing. What does it do? It, it works with this chord plug-in. kind of hard to hear on this one but essentially it's creating another note that's happening so it's firing another one of these chains
So we should be able to see... There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, see how there's two lights happening now? Well, f whenever it's firing the first step, it's also firing, firing like the chain that's four steps away from it. So now two notes are happening at the same time. And so this doesn't really determine how, uh, how far away the additional note is. It determines how far away the additional chain is fired. And so it's only going to fire notes that are within this original, uh, you know, selection of notes. And yeah, it just sometimes creates cool sounding patterns when you add the different notes in there. Sometimes, you know, because you're only working with eight notes total, it gets really busy and it doesn't work, but sometimes it does. I'm just listening for something cool. So something like that, you wouldn't get that melody out, and then we can change the velocity. Anyway, I just thought that was a fun little thing to to add in there. Then we have uh, the this controls the pitch. Oh, that's not gonna make a difference. Um, this controls the pitch of the notes. Pretty obvious. And this is mapped to uh, a pitch plugin in all these. Okay, then on each chain, we've got a scale that creates, you know, that sets it to, um, to the note that we need it. And then got a pitch which transposes it up and down then we've got a note length and I'll show you how I use this if you want the notes to be longer obviously just go up but if you want all of them to be longer just right click copy value nice command Z to get those back cool now here's another thing that I did uh, I added a chord plug in to the end of the chain there we go so now we can hear that this on the fourth beat, we are adding a little chord. So that higher note is there, and it's also there. You can change it. Cool. And you know, you can add endless things onto this chain because, yeah, it's fun. Then we've got a random plugin. Uh, it's on buy, it's on, I want to do alternate. And my, my thought with this plugin is if you're recording the MIDI data onto another channel, that you could essentially ride this to uh, create some fills because uh, a lot of times the actual random doesn't really make me that happy because it's too random. So let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. And then... And then you would just take all that MIDI, which is nowhere to be found. Pitch sequencer, post effects. All right, so if you want to record the MIDI data, I guess you can't have an instrument on there, which is just stupid. Maybe I'm wrong about that. So I would duplicate this track, then I would copy the instruments onto this new MIDI channel, paste them over there, get the MIDI from Pitch Sequencer, go in, stop this guy, and now these instruments have to be gone. And let's see what happens there. MIDI 2 for electric. 
Oh, that is so lame. Whatever. Alright, so now we would fire that. And we can have our fills going. Cool. So now we've got our MIDI here. Fold that sucker up. And you would be able to pick out your favorite fills and just use them. Cool. So that's what that is for. Uh, I guess you could, in this zone, you could automate it. Or you could modulate it. Right click. Show modulation. Unlink. Length. Two. And then bring it down, down, down. And then roll with it. And I didn't hear anything. There it is. So, yeah. If you just wanted a variation on the end of your phrase. Oh, yeah, it's kind of cool, actually. Boom. I might actually keep that. What now, son? Oh! All right. Um, I think that covers everything that's in this rack. So, now let's look at the 16-step version, which is basically the same. It's got the same rate, uh, pattern shift, major minor key, the, uh, the dyads. Uh, this would be the triad. Um, we have 16 steps, and because there are 16 steps, we can't have the nice like you know mapped macros like this but you could make a template where each one of these pitch things here is is mapped to a controller or whatever but basically what i usually do is uh, um you know you just down arrow and well the other thing is you have blue hand you can um so with the blue hand it'll auto map to your controller so you select it with blue hand, and then you turn it, and then you just hit the down key, and then reselect the new one, the down key on your keyboard. And then you could just go through like this and change the pitches very quickly. Or you can just do it all with the mouse, and that's that. Um, and we've got, oh, you know, I had this random on the, uh, on the end of each chain on this rack, too. Um, because I like that idea, because you can make one of these pitches, you know, be random. So if we make the first one be random, and of course with 16 notes it's going to be hard for you to pick that one note out, but um, you get the idea. Again, it's just, I feel like little bits of random, you know, create variation instead of chaos. Um, and then there's our global random. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, and, oh yeah, so here's kind of an idiosyncrasy with this method, this rack. Because of the alternating method of this uh, random device, which is no longer random, it's just going alternate. But anyway, um, the, the sequencers can get out of time, not out of time, out of order with the click. So if I hit the stop, you see that it's just going to go from where it left off instead of starting at 1 each time. This is a problem. And so I originally tried to fix this problem by using the arpeggiator and going up distance of 1 8 times. And in certain instances, it worked. But sometimes it doesn't. It just, like, skips. I don't know why. It just doesn't keep going in 16th notes or whatever. So, if anybody has the answer to why the arpeggiator device doesn't do kind of what I thought it should do, is just go up and up and up. I don't know. Anyway, does that make sense? If not, just ignore it. Let's go back to zero. So, the, the random device ended up really being the way to go, but we still have that problem of restarting. So, the way to fix that is... Well, there's two things. The way that I've been doing it is just always work with, uh, you know, a specific quantized value. And then use the stop clips button 
because then it's going to stop it right on the one. And every time you fire it again, it's going to start from where it needs to go. Does that make sense? How that works in a, a range view, I don't really know. But at some point, I freeze these and, you know, stop dealing with that and just work with the audio. So that's one. Of, but, uh, okay, so here's how to actually reset them. Just copy or cut and paste the random back in place. And that's going to reset it. So you just do that for each one of the ones you have in the set. Okay, really? Go. Uh, I think that's all of them. So now when I fire this, it will start at the top and life will be good. Oh, uh, yeah. And then we stop the clips. And the next time I fire it, it's going to start uh, from the beginning. Cool. All right, that's the rack. There will be a, um, a download somewhere for my version of this rack. And again, check out uh, the Ableton Cookbook for more cool stuff. And thanks for putting that out there, dude. I really love this rack. Really love this idea. It's genius. No Max for Live needed. And I love everybody. And I'm going to have some more coffee. Goodbye.